was a pretty average day for for that uh, last summer. We were all having a nice time. It's there were four of us that were spending a lot of time together: and me, Lewis, and Callum, and Sadie, a very good friend of mine. Um, and it started like most other days, where we just sort of were, you know, looking for something to do, you know, trying to make the most of life. And definitely didn't think anything would go wrong. Not until it happened, really. It was, um, you know, an, an innocent venture. In December 2010, Wren lost his dear friend Joe Hughes when he took his own life. Despite extensive searches by lifeboat volunteers and friends and family, Joe's body was never recovered from the sea in the Menai Strait. Wren has expressed some of his feelings about this and the impact it had on him in several songs, including Freckled Angels, for Joe, and the song beginning with S. In the latter, Wren mentioned a few other friends, and the Callum he was referring to was Callum McKay, another close friend that Wren lost, when they were both far too young. Callum and Wren grew up in adjacent areas on the Isle of Anglesey in Wales, Wren in Duran and Callum in Lanvirepool. The two areas share services such as schools, and between the ages of 11 to 18, Callum and Wren both attended the same Menai Bridge Bilingual Comprehensive School, as Gold David Hughes, although Callum was in the year above Wren. reflected that Callum was one of those friends who was constant throughout school. He was a year older than me, always positive, always down to get up to whatever stupid shit was on the menu that day. Fond memories of getting older kids to go get us a bottle of vodka, then heading into the woods behind the co-op and getting so drunk we'd usually end up either throwing up or creating beautifully blurry memories. I loved and looked up to that guy so much. Dr. Brian Jones, head teacher of his goal David Hughes, recalled how Callum played schoolboy rugby for North Wales and helped run an anti-bullying group, as he wanted to offer comfort to those who needed someone to talk to. Wren continued reminiscing. The last time I saw him was ironically at Joe's funeral. I just won two bottles of wine on the raffle we set up, which was the last time I ever drank alcohol. I decided it would be a sensible idea to drink both, and we had a great send-off. Felt right all the lads being together in one place, despite the circumstances. Me and Cal were both absolutely hammered and reminiscing about old times and it felt just like being back in the woods. I got the news Callum had died six months after Joe took his life. At the age of 21 it was really difficult for me to process that two of my best friends could die in such a short space of time. Joe dying had hit me so hard that I was almost unable to process Callum going shortly after. <laughs> But what happened? What do we know about the circumstances in which Callum died? The year was 2011, the month August. A group of four friends on Anglesey had just finished their university degrees and had been enjoying a well-earned break during the summer. The group included Callum, Lewis, Lawrence, and Sadie, all just 22 years old. Callum had recently graduated with a philosophy degree. Callum's family described him as an inspiring committed and passionate individual with a wide group of friends. They added. His passions ranged from an eclectic range of music to photography and sports, especially climbing. He had a great love of the North Wales countryside, both the mountains and rivers of Snowdonia and the beaches and cliffs of Anglesey. However, possibly his greatest enjoyment was the time he could spend with his friends sorting out the problems of the world and life. 
he was a wonderful son and friend. On this particular occasion, the four friends met up for a spot of fishing at the beach on Porth Tricostel, near Rosnager. The area is renowned as a great place to fish, and that was why they met. The friends didn't plan to go swimming, and the conditions certainly weren't optimal for that. However, that is exactly what Callum chose to do. Coroner Dewey Pritchard Jones was to later say, the decision to go swimming in the conditions that prevailed that day wasn't wise. Although it wasn't difficult to go in the sea the problem was in getting out and the waves were such they were unable to get out safely. I think Callum's enthusiasm was too much for him in that he decided he was going swimming. It wasn't a wise decision. If he wasn't so enthusiastic he might not have jumped in. But he went in for the pleasure of swimming in such conditions and the fact he couldn't get out was a pure accident. determined guy and then from there you know it, it all went a bit wrong and ended up with uh, Lewis actually jumping in after him uh, and uh, uh, that's it really I think I think what's important is is the um, you know the sensation that we had when we were going there is, was one where we felt like you know nothing could go wrong you know we, we could do absolutely anything with you know with the space around us uh, as and it's a similar feeling as anyone who's like growing up or is young, but you, you really do. I think what's important is you have to realise that uh, it can it can go very wrong. And you were sort of standing by watching this all unfold, and it, your instinct must have been to sort of go and help, but you were advised not to, weren't you? Yeah, absolutely. So, what happened next was an utter tragedy. Callum got into difficulty in the choppy water. Seeing that his friend was in trouble, Lewis stripped off and in his underpants dived in to try to save his friend. He was eventually forced to give up, but the waves swept him back into the sea. Lewis was picked up by a helicopter piloted by Prince William, who served as an air ambulance pilot in the Royal Air Force, RAF, and later for the East Anglian Air Ambulance Service. Flight Lieutenant Wales, then aged 29, piloted a helicopter as a winchman was lowered into rough seas to try to save Lewis. But devastatingly Lewis was pronounced dead on arrival at hospital while Callum's body was found a week later. Prince William was reported as being inconsolable after Callum and Lewis died. The RAF source said, William was inconsolable when told the man had died. He was professional. The crew didn't want to give up the search. A double inquest was told that Lewis was to be nominated for a posthumous bravery award by the Carnegie Foundation. Callum's father Stephen said the award was absolutely justified. He said at the time, we want to pay a huge tribute to Lewis Allen Derrick for his unstinting bravery in not even considering his own safety but just going and trying to rescue our son Callum. Just by a quirk of fate, a tragedy has happened. Accidental death inquest verdicts were recorded on both men. <laughs> Callum was cremated at Bangor Crematorium in a private family ceremony. The following day more than 400 friends and family packed into the Conway Center Chapel near Plas Nuiv, Lanvirpool, to pay tribute to Callum. At the chapel a slideshow pictured Callum enjoying himself with friends and family and on holidays. A board of photographs was displayed and friends urged to write their tales of adventures with Callum in a book of memories. At the ceremony the flags of Scotland and Wales were draped over the altar and the congregation sang the Scottish anthem, Flower of Scotland, thinking of Callum as the flower. Oh, 
bar of Scotland When will we see your like again That fought and died for your wee bit here Callum's dad Steve, standing with his wife Anne and Callum's sister Hannah talked movingly about how his son shared a birthday with him. He recalled his son's birth, incidents during his childhood, watching Callum play rugby, and holidays where they had enjoyed bungee jumping as well as a recent walk around Puffin Island. Mr. McKay said, he went to Edinburgh University to study social sciences before deciding it wasn't for him. For a time he decided to become a philosopher before ski boarding before returning to work at the Fat Cat, in Bangor. He had the heart of a lion and was a true free spirit. Callum was very proud of his Scottish and Welsh roots and this was described by Father Griff, who led the service, as a formidable, Celtic combination. Mum Ann said, it was during his travels that Callum found pride in being Welsh. We have to remember it's an honor to be a parent. We have fond memories of Callum and we are proud to have been his parents, but we must continue on the second part of our journey as parents without him. Close friends paid tribute to his zest for life and girlfriend Sadie spoke of their plans to visit India. Just tell us why you've decided then to, to host um, an evening sort of in memory of, of Lewis and Callum. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's a year on now, and I think that, um, that you know someone was going to have to facilitate uh, a chance for you know both sets of friends to get together because I'm sure that they're all doing their own things. But um, you know, I think it's important that everyone has a chance to get together and have a chat about them. And of course, we, you know, we're trying to raise a lot of money for the RNLI to try and pay back some of the uh, some of the work that they did last last uh, August. Yeah, because they, they tried to help, didn't they, in the rescue? Absolutely, yeah, they, they were there. They, there was a good response, just a little too late, really. It's quite rural. And the, the air rescue came as well, so that was someone else I'd like to thank, really. So what's the sort of tone of the evening? I mean, obviously it'll be quite reflective, but is it a, an opportunity to celebrate their lives as well? Absolutely, yeah. Um, there'll be uh, food and we're having um, a prizes from, you know, lots of generous uh, local businesses for, that we're going to be raffling off and auctioning. And there's going to be some live music. And yeah, and, and absolutely, we'll be in a bar and we'll, we'll just uh, hopefully have to get to have a good chat about them. And uh, we've got some uh, some of the guys coming down from uh, Bomaris or in a live station. Uh, to answer some questions, so hopefully that will be helpful for some people. And Lawrence, you said uh, at the start of the interview that, you know, on that day when it happened, you sort of felt like nothing could touch you, it was an ordinary day, you were a gang of friends just sort of enjoying the moment. Do you think very differently now about, you know, the dangers of, of the sea and the power of the sea? Absolutely. Uh, not only the sea, uh, you know, lo lots of things that uh, the young people get up to. I think that just a, a, a tiny bit of rationality goes a long way with these things. If we're able to, you know, make some, some youngsters think twice before, you know, before doing something dangerous, then that's uh, a good thing. Wow. Wren's composition really was a fitting tribute to a dear friend. Wren signed off the YouTube description with these words. Today is one of my favorite people's birthday. There was a few times we shared birthday parties cause they were so close together, they were always chaotic and awesome. This is me sharing my birthday with him once more. I wanted to write something for him for such a long time to pay tribute, but there was a mental block and nothing ever felt right. One day I was sat by my piano and I started to play with no real intention, and this song came out of me that had no words, just music, and for some reason it managed to express what I wasn't able to with words. It felt fitting to hold onto it and release it for his birthday. This is for Callum McKay. Love and miss you always. Wren. Well, happy birthday Callum, and happy birthday Wren. Dear, dear souls, both. Life is so short and so indescribably precious. 
We never know how long our loved ones will still be around, or how long we ourselves have left. Don't sweat the small stuff. Try to forgive past grievances. Reach out to estranged friends and family members where appropriate. Tell your favorite people that you love them. Really fucking love them. Hug them. Kiss them. Show them with your actions as well as your words. They mean the world to you. Never forget it. Take care of yourselves, and each other. Much love my little disco biscuits.